I'm quite excited now that we've got this deal with the Abamutong First Nation under our belt. We know we'll get back to doing what we do best, which is exploring and discovering gold. Talking gold here with Storm Exploration and Bruce. We did catch up last time on your deal with the First Nations. Congrats on that again. And now interesting to see what's ahead for the drilling season in 2024. Right. Well, we're, uh, as you mentioned, we've got this deal now with the Abamutong First Nation, which is historic. We're the first company to do a deal with this First Nation and certainly more than a decade. Decade. And certainly since the regulatory landscape changed in Northwestern Ontario. So quite proud to have achieved that. And that really opens the door for us to go back to work and do what we do best, which is explore. You know, we've been dormant for quite a long time, as you know, while we negotiated this deal with the First Nations. That, and, you know, it took just over two years to complete the deal. And I think in that time, the market's kind of forgotten. They've moved on to other things and they're not really aware of this project. So I think it's a good time and incumbent upon me to get out there and make sure the, the market understands the value of the project that we, we took so long to negotiate for. All right, let's talk a bit about that value of the project uh, that you've negotiated so long for, Bruce. You brought a map along showing some drill highlights. Perhaps you can tell us what are we looking at? What's the potential here? And why are you excited as geologists? Sure. So we have three projects in the Abbotung First Nation territory. The one I'm talking about, certainly our primary focus in the company is the Mimeniska project. And it hosts a banded iron formation that has been proven to have gold in it through previous drill campaigns and, and some pretty exceptional intercepts in that banded iron formation, particularly on the western side. So if I'm just to recap, the Mimeniska project covers about 12 kilometers east to west and there's banded iron formation, which is a type of rock that runs all the way through the project area. There are two prospects on this project. In the east, there's one called Frond. And then in the West, there's one called Mimeniska. So these two prospects were initially found in the 1940s, primarily because they outcrop and they're right on the shore of a lake. So they're relatively easy to find initially. And then there was some drilling in the 1940s on these two different prospects, one at the East and the West. And then again, another round of drilling in the late 1980s. But then very little ha work happened until the early 2000s when the company that we're acquiring these projects from did a small drill program in 2004, 2005. You can see on the ground that some of the results that we've seen from the previous drilling that was done. And really, it hasn't tested these two uh, bodies very extensively. The drilling in the 1980s really just kind of re-drilled the stuff that had been drilled in the 40s to confirm. And then there was some expansion and drilling in the t in the early 2000s, but clearly very well endowed with gold, some excellent intercepts there, and great room to grow both laterally where we have the gold mineralization, but also in areas there has been no drilling, but we see a lot of prospectivity. Our focus will be on that prospect in the West, the one called Mimeniska. That has the most extensive drilling and has the best results on the project so far. If I would talk a little bit more about it, I, you know, one of the things that we really like about Mimeniska is the fact that it is banded iron formation. You know, banded iron formation is a class of gold deposits that are very attractive to producers. And, and the reasons they're attractive to producers is, first of all, they can produce very large gold resources. It's not uncommon to see things that are over three five million ounces. And the other thing is that they tend to be very high grade, so they can be very profitable. In fact, about 150 kilometers to the northwest of Mimeniska, there's a, a mine called Muscle White. And the Muscle White mine is operated by Newmont. And it's quite remote. It's a fly-in, fly-out operation, but it is one of the best producers that Newmont has in its portfolio. So even though it's a remote mine and it's an underground mine, it's still a very profitable operation. So producers like that, because they have this large footprint, they're higher grade, but also the, the metal Metallurgy tends to be fairly simple. It's not got a lot of, of complicated metallurgy. There's a lot of free gold, so it, it's fairly simple. And the grades tend to be very consistent. They're not nuggety. So you know how many ounces you'll be mining today. You'll know how many ounces you'll be mining tomorrow. You can be very confident in that consistency. So these kinds of projects are very attractive to producers. So, you know, given that we've got a footprint of, of known gold mineralization, the opportunity to expand it significantly, as well as being an attractive type of gold deposit, I think this may makes this project quite special. Makes complete sense, attractive type of project, quite large potential size, three to five million potential here, uh, like you described. And of course that neurology with a very similar type of deposit found uh, northwest of you, 150 kilometers producing mine as we speak. And of course on this project, you have signed a deal with the First Nations. We've already talked about this, but now that you have this deal, you can actually start working on the project again. What are your plans, Bruce? So right now I think what's important for us to do is because we've been dormant for so long in this 
project that we need to get out and do marketing and make sure that the market understands this project like something like we're doing here. I think that will really strengthen the company and the awareness of the project. We will then go out and embark on a financing that will allow us to drill. We already have drill targets. We know where we want to drill at Mimaniska on that Mimaniska prospect in the West. We have some great targets. So it's really a matter of, of raising some money. And, and that's probably between one and a half to two million dollars to complete that drill program. But again, I want to get out there, make sure the market understands what we're doing, what the value proposition was with this project before we raise that money. Talking about raising money, uh, Bruce, right now your shares trading at five cents on the TSXV in Canada. Um, your market cap is 2.6 million with 41 million shares outstanding. Do you see that as a challenge when you just mentioned that you need to raise one and a half to two million for this drill season? I will certainly, I'd like to think that again, this marketing will help the general market understand that this is, you know, perhaps even an undervalued project. I mean, every CEO tells you that their project and their, and their company is undervalued based on their project, but $2.6 million market cap for a project of this gravity, uh, I think is, you know, pretty good value proposition. I think there's a lot of room for that to grow before we actually raise the money. But again, I need to get out there and tell the market what we've done. Uh, and remind them about the value proposition here. That makes complete sense. And uh, let's say in a case uh, someone finds this value proposition interesting, 2.6 million with this Mominisca uh, project, how would they uh, get in touch with you to participate in that uh, upcoming funding round? Well, certainly I am available by email. I'm just bcounts at stormx.ca. I'm happy to talk to investors or people who are potentially becoming investors. So, you know, that's a big part of my job is to make sure that the, the people are aware and to answer any questions and concerns that people might have. Yeah, we'll put the contact details also down below and uh, good luck Bruce. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm quite excited now that we've got this deal with the Abaminton First Nation under our belt. We know we'll get back to doing what we do best, which is exploring and discovering gold.